It's time for Supply Chain Now. Broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Heard around the world, Supply Chain Now spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton back here live with you on Supply Chain Now. Welcome back to the show. If you can't hear it, we're broadcasting live today from Modex, the largest supply chain trade show in all of the Western Hemisphere. Uh, it's being held right here in hashtag Supply Chain City, Atlanta, GA. Today's show, we are speaking with yet another supply chain technology leader. We're going to be talking all about voice automated workflows for the supply chains. That's some game changing territory here. Uh, stay tuned as we promise this is going to increase your supply chain tech IQ. Uh, quick programming note first, you can subscribe to what we do wherever you get your podcast from. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, you name it. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. So we'll welcome in my fearless, esteemed co-host here today on today's show, none other than Greg White, serial supply chain tech entrepreneur, trusted advisor, highly spirited lunch discussion facilitator over tacos today. Yeah. Greg, how you doing? I am doing great because we had street tacos, yep. and they were spectacularly delicious. I think you so, had 17 of them, but as I was counting. Only three and a Coke. So, <laughs> hey, look, I'm walking a lot while we're here, so I'm yes. burning calories, man, and I'm taking full advantage of it. Well, so, so you know, Greg, this is our last episode of day three, and we've had a full schedule, Gosh, full run. Tomorrow is our Vector Day. We're looking forward to Vector Global Logistics, uh, none of the world-class culture Award winner at the Atlanta Supply Chain Awards. Yep. Uh, Enrique Alvarez will be with us. But, you know, I'm really excited about this episode. The pre-show alone has been more entertaining, you know, I feel than, like, that, than that fair ride right behind you. Yeah, I feel, like I, know, I feel like I know Bob already. <laughs> um, and, Bob, if this whole thing of yours doesn't work out with AccuSpeech, you're welcome to join us because you would be great. <laughs> hey, on I just show. want to know where my tacos are. Yeah. <laughs> After the show. That's right. Yeah. All right. Be a good boy. We'll feed you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, okay. So with us. Ther- Therese said no food until afterwards. <laughs> so if y'all can't tell, this is going to be a lively episode. So yep. buckle in. We have Bob Bova, president and CEO of AccuSpeech Mobile with us. Bob, how you doing? Fine, gentlemen, fine. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Great yeah. to have you. I uh, have enjoyed your company already, and you've been here only for about 17 minutes. So looking forward to the next 40. Um, so before we start talking about AccuSpeech Mobile and some of the big things you're up to there as an organization, let's get to know Bob better. So, Bob, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I live in Irvine, California. Um, I have a, a lovely wife and two sons, uh, one in college, one about to go to college. Um, I'm originally from Woodbury, Connecticut. Okay. Little, oh, when really? I When I grew up there, it was 2,400 people. Yeah, of course. A uh, little bitty town. Um, great place to grow up. It really was. Mm-hmm. And uh, What brought you out to California? I, in 1983, I had an opportunity to take a job out here. Good year. Oh, it, it, it was. It's certainly a good year to move out to California. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was living and working in New York City, Manhattan. I was uh, working downtown for Lanier Business Products. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Selling, selling tech to brokerage firms and law firms and uh, living the dream, right? I was 23, 24 years old, mm-hmm. young. In working, the big city. Uh, yeah. 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 And I had gone to Syracuse University and from being from Connecticut, that was my dream. I wanted to live and work in New York. And it was working out great. And then... Like I said, I was doing really well, Yep. got promoted a couple times, and then all of a sudden the offers started flowing in, mm. and I had this opportunity in Southern California, Newport Beach. Okay, oh, nice. And um, the co- I kept saying no. The company was based in Cleveland, and so I was like, no, no, that's okay. And then they did some other things, and, hey, how about a nicer car? I want more money. And I was like, no, 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 no. And finally they said, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fly you out there. And it was the middle of December, and they flew me out, Ooh. and I was like, Okay, yeah. this this could work. <laughs> right. And my dad, who's one of my is like my hero, I called him up and I said, you know, Pop, it's not bad, you know. And he says, Bobby, New York's not going anywhere. You could always come back. And I thought that was great. Was great advice. That you know? is some <laughs> of the greatest <laughs> advice a parent could give. Is yeah, go right? ahead, do it. Yeah, take and, a shot. And so, um, and and my dad, I mean, he was uh, first generation Italian. Uh, my mom is second generation Irish. 
Um, so, oh, you know, Lordy. Yeah, exactly, right? It was very lively. Never a quiet lively, moment. Lively growing up. <laughs> and so, um, but my, my dad, you know, he took over the, the painting contracting business my grandfather started. Yep. Uh, both my brother and I started working full-time at 12. Mm-hmm. Um, those were great years. I mean, mm-hmm. I loved it. I mean, just, you know, getting to know how to um, work with customers and making right. them happy. Yes. And, and some of the people that I met, oh, gosh. It, so um, we're painting this house. It was it a was, uh, it was an interior job. It was in the wintertime, and my dad, I was working with the rest of the crew, and then we yep. finally got to the bedroom suite, and my dad said, look, you're going to do this on your own. And this lady had been wonderful to us. She made us lunch every day. And so I thought, okay. And so I get there that morning, and there she is, and she says, okay, Bobby, that's what everybody back, they all, my family, because my dad's always been big Bob. Right. But, you know, Bobby, you need to be really careful. I said, okay, sure. So I walk into this room. And it is just covered with pictures wall to wall with a gentleman, <laughs> this lady, and the Beatles, and Chuck Berry, wow. and, and anybody okay. you can think of, wow. and signed guitars. And, and here she is in all these pictures, smiling, you know. And, I'm, and so I turn to her and go, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> you remember Alan Freed? Yeah. Yeah, of course. She was Mrs. Alan Freed. Wow. wow. Yeah. And, and I was, I mean, I... Wow. It was co- it was cool, yeah. and and you know what was, and I just remember her being so nice, right? You know, down to earth, oh, yeah. just the best. It's all to the and, people. But I just, <laughs> I mean, here I am, you know, just a nineteen kid. years old, right. and I'm like, wow, royalty. <laughs> so, wow. moving right along, let's talk about you know, prior to your current role as president and CEO, AccuSpeech Mobile. What were some of those 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 important critical roles that helped shape your worldview and get you prepared for your current role? Well. When I started, as you could probably guess, it was in sales. Yep. And uh, Lanier was the first real big job that I had. And uh, I remember this coming to Atlanta, Georgia mm-hmm. for training. And it was the best sales training I ever had. Hmm. I keep remember, it was Liz Hansen. Okay. Wow. Was, you remember the yes, instructor. Yes, I do. Yep. <laughs> she was awesome. And, and that training... I took subsequent trainings after that, but it was still, it, to me, it was the best I ever huh. had. And so doing that and then moving out west, and then um, my first true mentor, Neil Collum, when I went to work for U.S. Surgical Corporation, it was my one, it was high tech for med at the time, mm-hmm. but I had never really done anything in medical. And um, he was the one that really kind of steered me towards, you know, <clears throat> if you want to do all this stuff, you know, you need to be stronger in other areas right and you also need to respect other you know and and he really brought me along and then i got to a point where i was his if they had a problem they sent me it right oh then, and, and i the beca- fix it guy uh, i was the guy that fixed it <laughs> and so uh, eventually i ended up getting back into tech yep. uh, decision data amulex and then um i got a job working for what was oliver allen which became u.s bank uh, they did a lot of financing of high tech, and what was going on was I was selling all these solutions when I was at Decision Data, and they right. would go around and finance them, right? So finally, they actually came to me and said, hey, why don't you just come on over here, Yep. and we can do it all in one shot. And we grew that from zero to $12 million in about two years, just me, and like then it was three other people. Wow. Back when twelve million was a lot of money, yeah, um, it still is. I, I, I don't, no, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to, I don't mean to denigrate twelve million dollars. Yeah, but uh, and then U.S. Bank bought them, and I really kind of wanted to grow that whole business, but they weren't really interested in, in growing it. Right. So, uh, and it, mm. within, uh, we were at the President's Club in Hawaii, and I was with my wife, and I we were talking, and I was saying, you know, they're not going to let me really kind of expand it. They're not going to, and my wife. We had just had our 30-year anniversary. She, she, she says, well, I know what that means. You're going to get another job. And I was like, well, I'd like to do something else. And then, and then Rainbow Technologies, within the week, I had, they had reached out. They had this new technology en- encryption acceleration, which I found fascinating. And they used it primarily in the government space, but they felt that there was commercial viability for mm-hmm. it. And that's when I met my second mentor, Mr. Waldstraub. And we got together, and it was just, you know, meant to be. Yeah. So he gave me the opportunity to run that division, and uh, we worked really hard. But we went from zero to $56 million in three and a half years. Wow. And became the you know, preeminent supplier of that tech. It was when online trading really started. Oh, yeah. So those SSL transactions, that's just high prime mathematics. Now, when you're on your 
well, at that time, a home PC, and right. you, you plug into Merrill Lynch or whatever you're yeah. plugging into to trade. Right. Well, they were getting thousands and thousands of people connecting all at once, and the servers would come down because they just couldn't handle it. Right. We made this little slide-in card that could do 200 every second. Nice. Uh, you were a trailblazer. <laughs> it was fun. So now I want to talk about you're, you're doing some trailblazing work uh, at AccuSpeech Mobile. So, so before we talk about where you spend your time, tell us about what the company, you know, what, what does the company do? We voice automate workflows. And in this industry, in this market, there's been voice-directed picking s- since Moses wore short pants. That's right. Yeah. And, and so the, the, the fact <laughs> of the matter is the, it, it had become very challenging for us as a, different, a differentiator type of a solution yep. because a lot of the messaging is the same, increased productivity, you know, errors, decreasing errors, and, and making you know, everybody better. Um, and so we started to gain a lot of success with a lot of Fortune 500 companies but then we started talking about voice automating workflows because we had customers that were voice enabling 16 workflows, shipping, okay. receiving, cross docking, right? Not just picking. Right. And when we finally started to talk about being able to voice enable your optimized applications, because most of the customers we talked to, they work really hard getting their applications specifically hardened and, producti- uh, and productive for mm-hmm. how they do what they do. Mm-hmm. Because when you're picking cases of soda versus shirts one at a time, that's those are entirely – people say, well, picking. Well, there's ultra pick, static pick, piece pick, case pick, pallet pick. You know, there, right. it's, there's a Batch lot of different picking. things. So when you go and you get to sit down with these folks and you get to really learn about their process, right. their workflow. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And our technology, not only do we have terrific voice recognition – but since we are a device-based solution, yep. we're embedded on the device. We integrate with the operating system. Okay. So the way we automate is if you say something, okay. we can push function keys, return keys. We can use the scanner all at the same time. I can say green, and I can fill in a 50 form, a 50 data inference form in the green way. Okay. So all that's done automatically. And push buttons. So green is a code for, for these are the entries. Yep. Wow. So let's let's. Uh, I want to demystify this just a bit, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, some folks in our audience will know exactly what you're talking about with voice automation and the different from crates to uh, SKU, all, all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. However, some folks are like never might have never been set foot in a warehouse or fulfillment center, or what have you. So, paint a picture. So you're talking about someone that is picking an order. That is wearing a headset, mm-hmm. smaller headset probably than this, earbuds or something. Not what? nearly as cool looking, is that what you're saying? <laughs> so <laughs> if you can, demystify, these these pickers are getting orders or order items, you know, verbally, and then that's guiding them where to go pick that product or that box or what have you, right? That's exactly right. Okay. Well, that's, that's 3A, row, you know, right, row well, that's, 17. And, that's, and that really is voice-directed picking. That's, that is the standard that's been in the industry for a long time right so what we do is we take what you we take that and let's say you've you know you hear okay go to location you know 47 8b and you go scan it beep okay you're in the right location now if you were in the wrong location you'd scan it and you'd probably hear a beep you might not hear it right Mm. so what we do is we voice enable those error messages Uh, hey you're at the wrong you're at the wrong place try it again not a beep, but right. it's, but it's you're, someone you're, said, hey. You're at the wrong location. Yeah. Yep. Scan yeah. again, right? So, and then they do it again, and then all of a sudden, it, you know, in a standard type of a voice picking scenario, you know, okay, pick four, pick seven, and sometimes they don't even use scanners. You know, you got to say four, seven, three, nine, mm-hmm. and they scan it. Now, what if there's none in the bin? So now if there's none in the bin, the person on, you know, a traditional type of a system <coughs> would have to either – Write it down or, or close it off and, right. and open up. And, uh, now, with our system, if we know what that workflow looks like, if, if I can push this, this, open up another session, yep. take the data that was in that previous window, mm-hmm. the, the scans, the location, and the part number, and then put me right in the data field that says how many, I'm going to save them a minute. Yeah, and, that's, and, that, and that is huge, especially when you think of, uh, if you you're, if you're picking seventeen thousand orders in a day, or just just picking a random number, we're picking on seventeen today for, for yeah. whatever reason. If you save a minute 
per See each of those orders. That is huge labor savings, amongst yeah. other things, right? Right. Well, and picking is always the most attractive application because it's the the highest density of usage, mm, right? right? So mm, everyone, right. but and been done for right, so long, right? Like you so, said. but again, the traditional applications you use it this way, mm-hmm. and we have to integrate it with your back with us with your back end WMS mm-hmm. with us. We do everything on the device, so we turn it into a one and zero before it even hits the network, just like you were if you would manually put it in. Okay. So there's none of that stuff in the middle. We just go right to okay. the WMS, so it updates it automatically without any translation. No middleware. No middleware. Okay. That, that's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I think the other element, why this is such a story uh, and it's such an important thing for folks to hear about, is these days... Warehouses have a hard enough time keeping up with sheer volume, so it's not. It goes well beyond just saving, and not poo-pooing the savings you can save if you're saving, you know, 500 minutes a day, what have you. But you're you're increasing capacity and throughput, right? There are so many different areas that we help, and the thing that's fascinating to me is being able to go into all these companies and all these warehouses and seeing. First of all, how hard all these folks work. Right. But also the difference of how they pick cardboard boxes versus, you know, pants and shirts yeah. versus cases of soda versus right. and, and how hard they've worked to optimize right. that process. Yeah. And how they've tweaked it and this and that, right? And so you say, okay, how do we make it better? How do we take, you know, that process and automate it. That's where the robotic process automation stuff comes in, the yes. RPA stuff. RPA. So RPA is ro- robotic process automation is when you take away having to push buttons or having it open, you know, all that's done in the background when you say something. Mm-hmm. So we take away all that, mm-hmm. you know, kind of grunt work in terms of pushing buttons and things so it does it automatically. Confirmations and whatnot. Absolutely right? everything. And so what we find is, so a new install we just did. Yep. The... The, the user goes up, and it it's cereal boxes. And when they get them on the pallet, they're loose one at a time. Really? So Yeah, right? So they go, and, they, and they're picking them, and they say, pick 150. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, did you see that bear skin? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. One, two. <laughs> so all we did was we would do it five at a time. Okay. Five, 10, 15, 20. Hey, hey did you see that bear skin? Yeah. Where was I? You were at 20. <laughs> oh, really? The system will tell you. Nice. We, we tell you. So if you and you speak back to it. No, no. Well. It's, 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 it's always bi-directional. Speech to text and yep. text to speech. So we can write a little routine in that data field that says keep track of the count. Mm-hmm. And, and tell him what the number is when he asks. Mm-hmm. And that changed everything. Right? Just that wow. little thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And, and, those are, and that's what we find when you voice automate existing optimized workflows. That's the kind of thing you find. You, yeah. take, you take them that next level, right? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Uh, all right, so the other twist in this, because there's so many different things, that, that the, uh, so many different components and aspects of your value proposition. But one of them, you know, this is the golden age of supply chain in, in many ways. Supply chain's got to see the table. I would argue that because of e-commerce, this could be also be known as a golden age of warehousing and fulfillment. Um, definitely However, fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, definitely fulfillment. But, however, and it depends on how you define warehouse, right? right? Uh, that's, what, that's all I was thinking. But, you know, um, we all know how the warehouse, warehouses and distribution centers and fulfillment centers are all competing for talent and labor to make it happen. And it seems like with what your product does, it's, it, it ratchets the pressure down just a smidge on, you know, because you're saving labor, right? Speak to that a little bit. If there's, I got it right. There's three very distinct benefits okay. that we've had our customers have told us. Yep. And the first one that we found was one of our first big customers 12 years uh, back in 2012. Mm-hmm. They would hire 2,500 seasonal employees for the holidays. And they would hire them right after Labor Day. Yep. And, of course, back in the day, you had to put them on the hip with someone who really knew the system, really knew what they were doing. And, of course, that slows them down and right. it takes... You know, 60 days just to kind of get up to raid because it takes a long time. So we help that customer with a training mode. So no matter where you were, you could say help at any time, and it could tell you what you could say. And also it slowed it down. 
so it didn't go as quickly. Right. Because you can alter the speed as well. Okay. If, if you get really good, you can be flying. Right? So you can adjust. It. So if you've got new hires that are that are getting up to speed, you can just kind of slow it down. Right. And as they, there's that learning curve, you can ratchet it back up. Right. Is that right. And you can take it out of help mode. You can put it on regular mode. And nice. so so you're going to get them up to rate in a week. Yep. Without having to pair them with one of your best employees. Mm. Wow. So what happened was the following year, instead of hiring them after Labor Day, they were hiring, hiring them after Halloween. Mm. Think mm. about that. Wow. I mean, you're saving all that money, right, because you can hire them up that quick. Almost now, two months later. Ex- exactly. Yeah. But today it's entirely different. Right. I was talking to a, um, uh, a, a VP of operations down in Fort Worth, and <laughs> Bob, <laughs> Our biggest, our biggest challenge, we lose 40% of our workforce every four months. Because if you go down to Fort Worth, which I'm sure you guys have probably been down there, yep. there's that area where it's, it's warehousing as far as the eye can see. Yep. Right. And they'll go across the street for 15 more cents an hour or 50 cents an hour, 25 cents an hour. And all he said was, I just need to train them up faster. Yep. And like you said, I'm hoping that if I give them voice, they're going to say, hey, this adds to my skill set. Yeah. Now I can say, hey, I know how to work with voice. Mm-hmm. I know how to, and so that's a that's a big piece. But what we do as people evolve, so you've got this big Windows to Android thing going. We have customers that run, and we have iOS now too. So that's actually you guys are the first to hear okay, that. Okay. So oh really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. That, actually, iOS. We're gonna. That's two biggies uh, today. Oh, oh Therese, yeah. Therese is gonna be furious because the press release goes out next week. It's okay. okay. By the time this publishes, <laughs> it'll be <laughs> after that. So you're out of you're oh, out of Dutch. I'm, 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 I'm out actually, of she'll probably be happy. Yeah. Because you'll be following on that press release. Yeah. So I gotta you ask. You knew that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I gotta ask. Well, what is iOS? It's Apple's Apple. Oh. Apple's oh. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll sing it a different acronym. I got you. Uh, no. I'm no. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, one of the things that we do is we have a lot of customers that are running on CE or running on, you know, Windows Mobile 6. Or yeah, really? And, oh, oh, you bet. Like, we started voice enabling back in 2012, so we yeah. got customers. I mean, was I, CE that? Uh, oh, yeah. Seems like that was 100 years ago. Well, I got customers who come to me and go, you know, we're going to buy them, and we're going to buy them in the used market. We're going to buy them until you can't find them anymore. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and that's, you know what, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, and, but what we've really tried to impress upon our customers is, if you're running on an older tech and all of a sudden you go to one of our really good resellers or even you come to us and say, hey, we really want to move to Android. Right. We let you move from one device to the next for free. No cost. If you've been paying your maintenance, we will move you. And now we've developed um, a, a conversion tool on our, t- on our toolkit, our SDK. Whereas if you have these projects in Windows, you can just push a button and it will convert them Port to them Android. Over. How, it ports them over. How often are companies like g- give us some context. How often do they change out every 3 years or every 10 years? What how what, the hardware you mean? No, no how, how you're talking platforms. about platforms. Yeah, so platforms. Oh no, this is, this is this is a this is a generational Forever. thing. Yeah, yeah. Th- this is, is we're going from we are going from Windows that owned 99.6% of the market mm. CE, you know, uh, on mobile devices yeah. to where now Microsoft has said we're not supporting any of it anymore. It's over. So, and to just to give it some context, when you say mobile devices, you're talking Telzons. Oh, s- uh, scanners, uh, RFID readers, but no, tablets, laptops, because yep. you've got a bunch of uh, tablets that are ruggedized and installed on forklifts and on mini lifts, and, you know, they have tablets. So now everyone Running is CE. More, I, I more tell than you, that you is know. That I had never really thought about it before. I guess I haven't haven't paid that close of attention when I've been in a warehouse. Well, and the hammer's coming down because Windows has said we're not, mi- you know, we're not supporting it anymore. Nobody's going to make them anymore. What, is there a time? Is there a specific? It's, oh, it's over. Yeah, it's, they've already said it's. Uh, Microsoft has come out and said it's. We're done. And so now everyone is saying they're either going to buy it on the use or we have to move to Android now. Gotcha. And our existing customers, they have a path. But what we're doing now with the new folks who are saying we have to move is we're working with a lot of our resellers who, like RMS Omega and, you know, the, and SMG3, these guys, they'll go in and they'll say, okay, here's the, here's the path, right? Here's what you do. Yep. And so they come in and say, hey, by the way, not only can we move you to Android, we can voice enable your workflows at the same time. Right. So we're going to do everything all at once. 
Wow. Right? So then they go in and they'll look at their network. They'll look at all their stuff to make sure that it's, you know, right and tight. And then we come in with them and we, you know, we roll out these solutions. And mm. it makes the ROI, it cuts the ROI in half. Mm. Because if I can add 25, 30% productivity and they're making a new investment, what, what was going to cost, you know, 14 to 24 months to pay for, now is going to cost 8 to 14 months to pay for. Mm. And that's where we really start to add a lot of value, especially for our partners out there. So where are they moving? Uh, what, are, what are those systems are they m- moving from? I mean, so typically it's a non-voice enabled. Are, are they moving from other voice enabled to your so yes, solution we, as we, well? Yes, we have really started some significant evolution for very big companies to remove the older server voice-directed picking mm-hmm. solutions to our stuff, and a lot of it has to do with... Non-cloud enabled, right? Well, well it doesn't, you know... It, well, yeah, it's a server yeah, in right, your distribution right, center. Every, yes, exactly correct. Yeah. And some of it, you know, the, the whole point is, since they're, they have to move to Android anyway, and they're used to having voice, mm-hmm. you know, how do we make it better? Because, right, right, all these... All, everybody that's at this show is looking for, how do I make it better? Yeah. So if you can evolve to Android and get all these really wonderful new devices and new network connectivity i mean all this stuff and i can add voice to my own workflows mm. too and i can okay yeah let, i, I want to know more and, yeah. and that's where you know we're we're very busy mm. and it's it's busy evolving folks to the new stuff replacing the old stuff and customers who've always wanted voice who could never afford it because the traditional systems were always very mm. expensive mm. you know and so our stuff wow. is individually uh, every single device there's nothing in the middle it's all just right there yeah it's extremely cost effective which is why we get such a great roi yeah so you were talking about workflows you have been talking about workflows uh are, are there specific workflows that can be improved certain ones that can't be improved speak to that a little bit more actually that's a really good question um the fact is that there are some workflows that they've already self-optimized in the warehouse where all they do is scan, 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 next, you know, and they're, and they're just kind of moving along, and, yep. and and that's just kind of the way it is. Mm-hmm. And then once you get to really work with the customer and the people in operations and you really get to understand the flows, and then you get to talk to the people who actually do it, because that's always great input, too. Um, the, the whole point is you can start to see, for instance, we have a customer that in the shipping department, the boxes would come off, he would scan it, he would look at it, and it would either say UPS, FedEx, or a local shipper. Mm-hmm. Right? Every time. Every year, they had 12% errors. So all we did was pop a headset on that person, and as soon as he scanned it, it would say UPS, 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 three times, and it went to zero. Because some folks are auditory learners. Right. Mm-hmm. And some folks are visual. Yeah. Right? But if you hear it three times, it's every time. Wow. So Even the slowest among us, amongst us, like me. Might even catch on if we hear it three times, right? I need seven, but <laughs> I'm sure you could set it to do that. But, <laughs> you guess. <laughs> but the thing is, when you get an opportunity to really partner with your customer, right? Yeah. And you see the workflows, and you see where the where the bottleneck is. Mm. We have another customer that had a receiving application, and they had. Dual WMSs, one for receiving and, and one for um, break pack and, and putting it in inventory. Mm-hmm. And they would go and they would scan it. It would go into the one system. He'd have to walk to a PC, right? wait for it to populate, and then he would. We did all that on, on a single device, mm-hmm. everything. And it was all on it. So we took literally what was two minutes and eight seconds and turned it into a 12 second operation wow. for receiving. That is huge. But the, the big thing is having your customers say, oh, gosh, we've worked so hard on these applications, you know, and, and we've really got it to the point where we really know what we're doing. But if we could just do this, and the beautiful part about it is, and the part that people have the most difficulty believing when we say right, it is you right. don't have to touch the code of the application at all. Right. Everything we do is here because these devices now are so powerful, so much memory and power, yeah. and, and the capability is amazing. Yeah. So anything that device can do, I can voice enable it. Yeah. yeah. So in addition to the data collection, pushing buttons, barcode scan, read, mm. them, you know, all, all at the same time. So. All right. So um, AccuSpeechMobile.com, right? More that's information. It. That's it. Uh, before we, we wrap up that, I want to go broader. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to hear this. 
You're a bad. You're bad news, man. <laughs> yeah, I just, we're gonna ask you. For the record, that was Bob talking yeah, to Greg. Yeah. So. We're gonna ask you um, what you're seeing in the industry that's really got your attention, your interest, attention, concern, whatever it is. Things that could be impacting us today or in the future. What's got really got your attention right now? I think that with everything that's going on with the coronavirus right now. Yep. I think blockchain is just something that mm. we're going to see explode. And I think that as there is more expertise on this was manufactured, grown, painted here, yep. and it's in this you know, container right. on this ship, and yep. it got off at Long Beach, California, and, and then there were problems with it, you're going to be able to trace that back t- mm. to, you know, exactly where it came from. And, and that capability you know, combined with being able to utilize uh, software to, to do best practices, th- to me, that is, that's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, it's really, y- you want to know where everything is coming yeah. from and how it got there and who touched it, right? Right. So. Fully transparent. Well, let's form a blockchain company this afternoon and go to zero to 56 million. <laughs> it has, yeah. By next hey, week. I, well, yeah. I'll tell you what, my board would probably say no. <laughs> uh, let's, let's finish this first, and yeah. then uh, you might be able to next talk thing. to me. Next thing, yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But, you know, that's, I mean, that, I think that's a really good point. First of all, the nice thing about, and I don't think people know this about blockchain, is it is already commoditized as a technology. You can find some of the most uh, cost-effective, let's say, developers to help you develop a solution. If you've got a problem yep. and you want to solve it with an irrefutable record, yep. an unbreakable record, then, um, then th- there is a way to do it. Chain of custody is really what you're talking about, and we mm. talk about that all the time. And, yes. and, I, and I think as RFID technology continues to evolve, I, I find that fascinating too. That is an integral part of what is it, what's in there, mm. and you know, and you scan it, and all of a sudden there, okay, you know, there it all is in front of me at, yeah. at any point, from here to there. Yeah. yeah. So you know, th- there's there is a lot that has to happen. Yep. But you're right. I mean, it's it's coming together, and actually in many instances has come together yeah but like anything else it'll evolve quickly and pretty mm-hmm. soon you're going to have some really exciting platforms that people are going to be able to connect to that are going to give them what they well, want and as you talked about these devices and voice enablement um they they will help facilitate that as well i mean you know when you don't have to have and i was only about 10 years early on saying that telzons and the like were going to go the way of the one because of these things mm-hmm. because of of mobile devices um, but when those devices cease to cost so much money, it democratizes it across the entire supply chain. Anyone with any size warehouse can do can have the kind of capabilities that companies do today. Mm. Well, that the evolution to Android that that's what's happening because yep. the Android devices are so much less expensive than the Microsoft yep. web devices ever were. Um, but another thing that people have been talking to me about today is. Nobody, you don't have to touch anything. Right. If, if I can make it so right. that I don't have to touch anything, I am truly hands-free. Yep. Right now, that's pretty that's exciting. A beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. So, so, so uh, I want you to get, I want you to weigh in on something here, Bob. You know, you've been involved in a wide variety of technology implementations, uh, conversions, you name it. For folks, whether they're interested in AccuSpeech Mobile or whether they're looking at other technology implications, uh, uh, implementations, regardless of the reason. What's a couple of timeless lessons you've learned to make those transitions, those implementations more successful? God, I love that question. Yeah, what um, a great opportunity. I, I, lo- I love that question. The The fact is that AccuSpeech, mm-hmm. we, what we've done is we've said, let us come on site and do a proof of concept for you. Let us come to your site, connect to your network and your application, yep. and let us voice enable three, four, five screens. Let's put it in a little automation. You can show it to everybody, and we can show you that it will work. Mm. And I think that to be able to prove out your benefit statement, here's the automation, and then all of a sudden that's when the eyes get big. God, we could use it here. We could use it here. We could use it here. And so my suggestion is, uh, and and most of all the resellers that we work with, they go on site. Let me show you what we can do. Let me... You know, th- there's proof in the pudding. Yes, talk to my existing customers. Yeah, sure. th- that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But it is amazing to me 
the uniqueness of all these places, how they do what they do, the, the WMSs. You've got enormous companies that have their own WMS who never thought they could have voice because mm. it had to. It always had to connect to a commercially based WMS. Right. We right. come in and go, oh, no, we can connect to your homegrown WMS just as easily as anything else because we don't connect. It's all done here. Mm. And that's when you go and you, sh- and you do a POC and you show them, when can we start? Yeah. You know, and... and I, I believe that a lot of this technology that you're seeing now is becoming so edge-based, right. right? And it needs to be implementation and installation specific because everyone does their th- what they do so well right. and their workflows are so key that you need to go in and, and show that value. And then because if you do, you win. It's over. They're, you're, they're, they're signing. It seems Boy, like that's a, folks are getting untethered using you. You know, they're not tied to a certain platform well, or what have you. An enterprise class free trial is really what you're pr- you're proposing, right? If, but but yeah. it is it really does take that these days, doesn't it? I mean, because there is so much out there. There are probably systems that look like yours, but y- you just walk around the floor at Modex, and but you know the question that I think a lot of people ask as they go through these shows is what what do I do first? Yeah. You, and you, if you give them the ability that you're talking about to try it, they can see and feel it. We do the same thing, yeah. right? If you go to them, because they're not overworked. No, like, gosh, no. Th- no. These, these, these and there's <laughs> not a lot coming at them either. Well, no, no. Right. It's, no. It's, 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 they're, they got the feet up. They're, you know. Yeah. And, but, Looking so, out the window yeah, and venting exactly. Velcro. <laughs> no, so, so the, whole, the point is they have so much going on. Yeah. yeah. And they are drinking out of the fire hose. And they're then the sea level guys are like, so you're going to cut another 12% in cost this yeah. year, right? There, Big Jim. Yeah. And you're thinking, <laughs> uh, yeah, boss, I'm, I'm all over it. Yeah. yeah let me get. So yeah. if you can go to them and show it there, yep. and, and, and then, then they, they can extrapolate from there. Then, then, then you, you know, they can say, oh, gosh, yeah, we could use it here. Or, right. Boy, if I could just get 12% more, or if I could get 6% here, and yep. you know, then all of a sudden the entire discussion changes. Mm-hmm. And what you've done is you've, you've flipped the paradigm. Mm-hmm. They're not coming to you saying, God, can you help me? You're going to them saying, I can help you. Mm-hmm. And, th- and that's, the, that's the piece now that I think that, that's going to be necessary for all these companies. And I'll tell you what, there is some cool stuff here. Mm-hmm. You know, you, oh, you, you walk around and, it, and it's, I mean, there's some neat stuff. And, Even and for folks that have seen it all. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, did, what's, true. was it today, the Neurotech? The, 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 there was oh, the a, nano and neurotech thing. I was, I was like, thing? "Oh, yeah. come on!" I'm like, "Holy smokes!" So, <laughs> but, but, but it, that's just going to continue. Right. And again, it makes it even more complex for these VPs of operations or these guys running. You know, you know, it's it's interesting because there's so many robotics things here that, right. and and they're and they're some of them are huge, some of them are small, and you got to think, you know, how do I, how does that work for me? How do I, right. you know? But and again, there's a place for all this great tech, depending on how you're doing what you're yeah. doing. But yep. if, if you can go on site and show them this is exactly where we're going to help you and this is pretty much what you can expect. Mm. Um, and that's why we have, uh, like I so said, we have an ROI calculator that tries to take everything into consideration. Nice. You can pump in numbers if I get 8%, if I get 9%, if I add hardware, if I don't. And we put all that together and go, this is how you can present it to your, you know, the, the higher up saying, mm-hmm. hey, if, if we do this, we can expect this. And again, it's 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 consultative, but it's also again turning the paradigm upside down. I'm right. coming to you, and I'm showing what I can do. Yeah. And 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 I think so many companies here have the exact same. You know, th- that's what they're doing too. Yeah. Especially for their good customers. It yes. brings it home. I mean, it really brings home what the value is. It's hard to contemplate the change in your mind, and when you see it, it cements it in your mind. Yeah. Well, and again, these guys are so busy. Yeah. I mean, there's so much out there every day. There's something else, and these um, uh, and but twelve percent will get their attention. And it's never ever happened that anyone trying to sell you something has oversold it slightly. Never, never. never. So does that? Ever. So there's no doubt in anyone's <laughs> mind, right? There's no doubt in anyone's mind that anything can do whatever's been promised. Yes. So and again, you know, it, it, we're being sarcastic. Uh, is, is that what's happening? In case right? anyone, is, is, that case anyone is, is that's what's happening? Yeah, right in case now? anyone oh, yeah. has I just missed wanted that. To make sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, Usually it's me. Uh, well, the, the thing that's th- that's really fascinating is that again, the uniqueness of everywhere we go, mm-hmm. and how hard they've worked to make it as optimized as possible. And instead of saying, "Oh yeah, you got to take all that out," we're saying, "Show us exactly how it works." Yep. And let's see how we can, you know, voice automate this workflow, right? So that we can get you another. 
twenty percent. We can get you another fifteen percent without because, ripping and replacing it, your current th system. There you go. Love it. Love All it. right. So how can Bob Bob Bova? How can our listeners learn more about AccuSpeech Mobile? Well, they can go to the website yep. AccuSpeechMobile.com and they can request a demo. And if they request a demo, and we talk to them and they want an on-site uh, POC, we, we call it our Speak to Me POC. Um, if 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 we think that it aligns properly, I'll send some of my guys out. And okay. and if you're real lucky, I won't go. Uh, well, I was going to say, <laughs> actually, I was going to say exactly the opposite. How do they assure that they get you yes. on site? The one and only. Yeah. Well, I, well, first of all, uh, you know, I have a lot of Trace people. doesn't let you out of the building. No, does no. She? They yeah. throw me a steak every now and then. <laughs> and, they just, uh, if I'm, and if I'm good, they actually cook it. So <laughs> the, the, the thing is, though. I got a lot of really smart people that work for the company yeah. that, that will go out and have voice enabled hundreds and hundreds of workflows mm -hmm. and all with all kinds of WMSs, homegrown, commercially available, whatever, and they can just sit down and say, okay, tell me about you know your picking workflow. Tell yes. me about how you're doing this because you've got companies that have omnichannel, right? And mm -hmm. the, we've done all that for three different pickings and the same, and they'll say, hey, okay, here you go. And when they see that, like I said that's that's the way to go. You go to the website, yep. request a demo, uh, and then you know we'll we'll talk to you. And if it's a if it's a really uh, something that we can do a speak to me POC with, which we're happy to do, you know we'll mm -hmm. we'll go out and we'll plug into your system and uh, we'll show you what we can do. Outstanding. I'm convinced they could plug into you and power the facility for <laughs> a couple months on end, Bob. Well, I love you know. it. You bring a lot of passion, energy, and the fun factor. You know, supply chain is stressful enough. Right, technology is stressful enough. The demands, the consumer demands, supplier demands, you name it. You've got to, uh, you, you strike me as someone that kind of keeps things in perspective. Well, you know, I have been a very lucky person. Um, I, I married my best friend. Uh, I got two great sons. Mm. Um, I coached all their teams. We won championships together. I mean, awesome. I, right. I have been, I, I have really done exactly what I wanted to do. And I think. Being an entrepreneur gives you that capability. I mean, sometimes they don't they don't see it for a month at a time. Right, right. But then, but then there's also the opportunity to live the life you want to live. And and uh, I remember how hard my dad worked. You know, mm. and and he was always said, "Whatever you do, Bobby, make sure you're having fun." And I was like, <laughs> I was, I was, you know, I'm like, okay. When are you doing that, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was saying it. Hey, let me don't do as I do. Hey, when he don't do as I. I said my my I was the first one on both sides to go to college, uh, and yeah. my and my my brother was I think the fourth because mm. he was six years younger than I was. But then all of our cousins, right? And my dad is all he'd always say, "Yep." My sons are the first, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so he gets a lot of. He's eighty nine, going strong. Oh, that's really? great! Yeah, oh yeah, that's he's, great. He's, in Connecticut? No, no, he lives with me now. Oh, oh that's he, awesome. He's in Southern West Coast. Coast. Smart in, guy. You see how that? that? <laughs> you see how that came around? So you know what, so Bobby? So he's happy now. <laughs> you know what, Bobby? New York's always going to be there. <laughs> I never thought of that, but that's exactly right. He you see strategy. what he did there, right? Yeah. No, no, he's, uh, no, he's, yeah, he's, he's out in the yard every day playing with the dog and just having a good old time. I got to wow. tell you that that was probably the one of the biggest impetus to you being the risk taker, the entrepreneur that you are. Was your father saying that to you? I want you to go home and thank him for saying, "Bobby, New York will always <laughs> be here," because that opens your eyes mm. to the things, all of those things that you told us about. Mm. That helps those kind of moments help open your eyes to those things thank you know. your dad yeah well on, I, I on always, my behalf i always do he, and he always said never be afraid he says the fact is everybody's so worried about stuff yeah that, you know he always said it was like going to the dentist you know you worry about it for a month You're like, oh, and then you go and it's not so bad yeah so i don't know <laughs> i never have a good <laughs> dentist visit. floss every day man. That's right. it's floss it's every right. day that's it's, it's all but again it's it's never as bad as you think <laughs> what's the worst potential outcome scenario right so Root Canal is the worst, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah, just in case yeah. you're wondering. Well, All in right. that particular example. No, I think right. in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take coronavirus over Root Canal. I'll, tell you what, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just take a Corona with a lime. That'll there be, you there go. You go. <laughs> That's four booths over. Yep. All right. I hate to kind of bring this conversation to a close, but such a uh, really enjoyed your time. Yes. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I, I, I hopefully our li listeners enjoyed it as much as we did. AccuSpeechMobile.com. Uh, I imagine y'all do a lot of events. I imagine you do a lot of keynotes and panel sessions, uh, now and again. you know, in front of folks with your colorful uh, personality. Because again, it, you can convey information in a way that is is it's, it's natural, natural, yeah, yeah. human. 
Yeah. So good stuff. Bob Bova, CEO, AccuSpeech Mobile. Check him out at AccuSpeechMobile.com. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it, Bob. Okay, Greg, what a day. This Woo! wrapped up uh, day three at Modex. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had a bu- just a bunch of great con- natural yeah. conversations, as you put it. Yeah, I think, look, I love this format because we get to know and our and our followers and listeners and viewers get to know these people, yep. and um, and they see that it is people that are powering supply chain. Mm. Even if it, even if they're building automation, right? People are powering that. So, I, I think it's a really important aspect of of having any one of these experiences, right? Agreed. A, a trade show or you know or a, a keynote or whatever. The the people are what make it happen. That's so right. I love this. Just love doing this. Great I do meet too. You guys like Bob. So to our audience, stay tuned as we continue our coverage from Modex 2020. Day 4 is just around the corner. Also, you can check out our events and webinar tabs at supplychainradio.com where we have events from partners around the world uh, for virtual events and in-person events with folks like EFT Reuters Events, Automotive Industry Action Group, the George Logistics Summit, Stand Up and Sound Off, much, much more. You can check it out at supplychainradio.com. And while you're there, you can also check out our upcoming uh, replays of our interviews and a variety of other content. If there's something that you can't find on our website, you can shoot our CMO an email, amanda at supplychainnowradio.com, and we'll do our best to serve as a resource for you. So big thanks again to our guest today, Bob Bova, CEO, AccuSpeech Mobile. Uh, Find us and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. On behalf of Greg White, this is Scott Luton, wishing you a wonderful week ahead, and we will see you next time on Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody. 